In a sign of the times, it's now possible to plug your Honda CRV in. That's because the sixth generation version of this model gains a plug-in hybrid powertrain to sell alongside the full hybrid EHEV engine that most will prefer. Either way, this car has been completely redesigned for a new era, but its essential character hasn't changed too much. Honda CR-V has long been one of the world's strongest selling SUVs. Sometimes in a market full of more extrovert rivals, we've wondered why. After all, this has never really been a contender which has exactly jumped out at you from the spec sheet. No, you have to drive it, use it, fill it with family. Many of those experienced in doing just that probably won't even look at the alternatives before they replace their third, fourth or fifth generation CRV with this Mark VI model. Like its predecessors, this crossover, according to its maker, offers a depth of engineering that many rivals just don't have. It always has, ever since the original version of this compact recreational vehicle pretty much invented the segment back in 1995, with subsequent models in 2002, 2007, 2012 and 2016 being pushed ever more at market. Generations two, three, and four were built at Honda's plant in Swindon, but this Mark VI CRV is put together in China, nearer to battery supplies. Took a bit of time to get to British shores. Uh, this car launched in the US in 2022, nearly 18 months before it appeared here. Unsurprisingly, the core EHEV model is a full hybrid, but new for this sixth generation design is the option of the plug-in hybrid powertrain we're trying here. That allows this Honda to better match its arch rival Toyota, although this time the CRV has been priced to match that conglomerate's posh Lexus NX, rather than its more usual sparring partner, the Toyota RAV4. Honda's inserted another Civic-based mid-sized SUV model, the only slightly smaller ZRV for those who might might have a problem with that. If you don't, then what you're getting here is a redesigned CRV that's bigger, smarter, safer, and better connected too. To understand it completely, you're going to need the industry's most comprehensive review the car and driving road test. CRV always feels like a CRV behind the wheel, by which we mean ergonomically optimum. Now, most potential customers won't be quite ready for a car of this kind as a full EV, but pressing the start button in this one certainly gives you a full electric feel because battery power is prioritized and hybrid electric graphics illuminate in front of you to be replaced by perambulating dials that eventually settle down into a power meter and speedometer gauges. It's quite EV-like away from rest too. In fact, it'll be totally EV-like if you've chosen the top E PHEV version we're trying here, Honda's first plug-in hybrid, and the 17.7 kilowatt hour battery has been charged for a claimed 50 miles of range, which, unless you advise the drive system otherwise, will always be prioritized before the long stroke Atkinson cycle two litre engine cuts in. Obviously, it'll cut in a lot sooner if your choice of CRV is the more affordable non-plug-in self-charging hybrid EHEV model because that variance drive battery is just 1.06 kilowatt hours in size. As with the PHEV, there's a two-motor hybrid system with two-speed automatic transmission and an output of 181 bhp. The power control unit and the intelligent power unit that both undergird that EHEV technology have been made uh, more compact compared to the previous generation CRV hybrid. Uh, that was a car which offered a choice of front driven or four wheel drive options. Uh, this time around the EHEV hybrid only comes with four wheel drive in contrast to this EPHEV model where the system only drives the front wheels. It's the same EHEV drivetrain setup that in front driven form we've already tried in the Civic and the ZRV and functions the same way here. Uh, with both CRV models, when the hybrid system's working, it's rarely with the engine directly driving the wheels. Uh, instead, the four cylinder unit drives a generator and that provides power to the main electric motor which drives the car. When you stamp on the accelerator or run constantly at low speeds in town, the electric motor 
it can be clutched in to drive the front wheels directly. Uh, this latest EHEV system has gained a second lower gear ratio for this. It's all very clever. There are four main drive modes, Snow, Econ, Normal and Sport. Uh, the latter adds what Honda hopes is a sporty buzz to your proceedings. Uh, you might disagree. Uh, this PHEV version adds two further settings, EV and Tow. Uh, the latter reflects the fact that you need this plug-in hybrid uh, with its 1500 kilo towing weight. If you were going to pull anything along with this car, the EHEV version is restricted to just 750 kgs of brake towing capacity. There's a pleasingly big car feel to progress with both models and that's aided by the frequently selective dampers and perhaps by this model line's ever increasing weight, uh, nearly two tonnes in the PHEV model. It's the usual story with cars of this kind these days, lots of eco fanfare but also lots of contradictory heavy weight to counter it, which in the case of the hybrid model means emissions are significantly dirtier than before. You might prefer the hybrid version though and not just because it is a lot cheaper. It's around 100 kilos lighter and that does make it feel a little more agile when you're cornering. And as I mentioned earlier, you get the benefit of a four-wheel drive system which can move torque around between the front and rear axles as tractional needs demand. Honda uses words like exhilarating and sports car when it comes to the handling of this SUV and we're not entirely sure why because as ever with this model line the handling of this CRV has been engineered to uh, lower the heart rate rather than to raise it. It doesn't feel in the least bit sporty, nor should it. Uh, the steering wheel paddles there to alter brake regeneration settings rather than gear ratios and you'll find the steering about as communicative as a Trappist monk if you're looking for detailed feedback from the wheels. You will also have to manage things when it comes to bursts of speed needed for overtaking. Uh, you can certainly get a lot more power than this from rivals for the money that Honda's asking here, uh, particularly if you're wanting a plug-in hybrid. A cheaper Toyota RAV4 plug-in has 121 brake horsepower more than the PHEV version of this Honda, as does a more comparable Lexus NX 450h+. Uh, you won't particularly notice that deficit at low speeds thanks to a 6.5% increase in pulling power over the old model to 335 newton meters and the torque electric motor. Uh, 62 miles an hour takes around nine and a half seconds in both variants, but the powertrain does rather run out of puff over 50 miles an hour and you'll need to rouse the combustion engine to progress with any real urgency, at which point refinement does start to suffer. Fortunately, the uh, racket's now more contained than it was with the previous generation model, and that's thanks to engine vibration, insulation, and a more rigid crankshaft. But there are dynamic positives too, and for a typical CRV owner, they'll probably be more significant. As long as you control yourself with the throttle pedal, refinement is excellent, and the various power sources blend in and out very unobtrusively. Uh, the mixture between friction and regenerative braking is expertly judged. Body roll is decently controlled through the bends and the lower window line and the thin pillars make the car really easy to manoeuvre in urban situations. The 116 miles an hour top speed of the hybrid is 7% higher than the previous generation model. Uh, it's 121 mph for this PHEV. Driving this sixth generation CRV day in, day out, you'll appreciate the new drive assist features like the parking pilot auto parking system, the active lane change assist, and traffic jam assist, which can basically drive the car for you in low speed queues. But you do also notice a few quirks. Uh, we've never come across a car before that at any speed can permanently show you your distance to the curbside via a dedicated camera, which you activate by pressing the end of the left-hand wheel stalk. Frustratingly, every time you left-hand indicate, you're forced to look at this center screen feed, which is annoying when you're using the navigation and you're coming up to a junction. Equally irritating is something that Honda can't fix, the now mandatory need for speed limit chimes uh, that you have to keep turning off every time you use the car. 
Uh, we'll finish with off-road prowess, uh, which won't take very long because there really isn't very much. Uh, CRV owners have never needed this, so the Mark VI model is as compromised in terms of ground clearance, traction and tyre grip as all its predecessors were. It's designed for a trip to the local Amazon locker rather than the Amazon itself. And for that, it's as fit for purpose as it has ever been. This sixth generation CRV has what Honda calls a stronger, more aggressive presence. Its looks are apparently inspired by US market products like the Ridgeline pickup and the Passport SUV. Certainly bigger in every dimension than its predecessor, 80 millimeters longer, 10 millimeters wider. That's quite a big change, and it's indicative of the intended move up market suggested by that higher price. You'll notice that increased 4,706 millimetre body length in profile. It's 106 mils longer than the previous generation model. The horizontal lower window and crease lines form part of a silhouette, which is now slightly sleeker. Thanks to the larger footprint, the A-pillars have been positioned further rearward and the bonnet elongated for a more dynamic appearance. But uh, despite all this, uh, the CRV is still nothing like as sporty looking as some of its rivals. Honda hopes that customers uh, wanting that will be more drawn to their only slightly smaller ZRV crossover. As before, there are smart roof rails and a CRV signature tick in the lower window line around the C pillar, but the redesigned door handles and these uh, defined lower character lines will stand out to someone who is familiar with the uh, previous generation model, as will, incidentally, these double arc wheel arches which house 18 inch rims across the range which get Berliner black finishing with this EPHEV model. On this EPHEV uh, the charging flap like the fuel filler are on the passenger side of the car. Most of the bigger visual differences with this sixth generation model lie at the front where narrower LED headlights flow into a complex piano black mesh trimmed grille which gets wider, more hexagonal shaping with this EPHEV model. Beneath the grille with its blue tinged Honda badge, there's a low wide valance with EHEV variants incorporating a shutter which opens and closes automatically to reduce aerodynamic drag and to improve fuel efficiency. Either side of this slim grille and the front valance, these vertical side vents create an air curtain which channels airflow through the bumper while strakes on the wheel arches further reduce turbulence around the wheels. At the rear, the vertical tail, brake and turn light combination has been redesigned and lights up recognisably at night. Uh, sporty touches include this subtle roof spoiler and the chromed tailpipe finishers that sit below the slim rear reflectors. From here, you might notice this Mark VI model's 11 mm increase in width. It's 2.15 metres wide with the mirrors. If you haven't tried a CRV for a few generations, just won't believe just how big this one is. So, time to take a look inside. Do the premium aspirations on show here extend to the cabin? Well, to be honest, not really. It is very much like a Civic in here with a low set dashboard offering a clean, uncluttered look and a full width air vent with toggle controllers, all of which is just about okay for the lesser ZRV, but it's not really plush enough for an SUV commanding the kind of price tag that this sixth generation CRV now carries. If Honda could just poach a top European prestige brand cabin designer and give them free reign, the showroom appeal of the cars would improve immediately. The brand has done its best to plash things up, uh, real leather upholstery, silver pedals, a powered driver's seat and so on, but it's not quite enough. And the dark trimming's all a bit doer. Look a bit closer though, uh, and if you don't really prioritize elegantly trimmed, soft touch stitched surfaces or trendy avant-garde design, you might conceivably find plenty to like in here. As usual in a Honda, the ergonomics are difficult to fault with everything falling perfectly to hand. 
Unlike in the ZRV, this isn't an SUV that sits you unusually low. There's a much more commanding driving position and one that also feels naturally comfortable, helped by the adoption of the brand's body stabilizing front seats, which are heated and eight way adjustable. Uh, these incorporate a planar resin mat structure to support the occupant's entire lower body from the pelvis through lumbar spine for greater stabilization and support. This also improves the hip point position that makes it easier to get in and out of the car. What else? Well, there's a sleeker electric gear selector and unlike with some rivals, you don't have to put up with silly design flourishes which irritate in everyday use like awkward haptic switches and silly slider bars or climate functions you have to search through screen sub menus for. Honda has properly separated these out, uh, providing three knurled dials for temperature and fan speed. The screens are just as you'll find in a Civic, uh, starting with a 10.2 inch digital instrument cluster that you view through this three spoke steering wheel, which is loaded with proper buttons. Uh, the brand calls this screen configurable, but there's no selection of display formats, uh, nor can you have full width GPS mapping. Instead, flanked by a battery charge readout on the left and a fuel readout on the right, uh, this display offers a left hand power meter and a right hand speedometer. Uh, these two main virtual dials are separated by a drive assist display with a digital speedo above. Along the base of the screen, uh, there are temperature, gear selection, drive mode and odometer readouts. Knurled roller switches on the steering wheel spokes control what you see in the instrument screen's two dials. The left one controls the center of the power meter display, allowing the driver to select audio, phone or setting functionalities, while the right side wheel spoke controller deals with what you see in the center of the speedometer and can be used to select a power flow graphic, trip computer data, a compass, uh, the driver attention alert system and safety support info. You won't be looking at the instrument binnacle uh, too much with the top trim levels because they include a head up display. As usual in one of the brand's modern models, infotainment's taken care of by this freestanding nine inch Honda Connect central screen. It's a big step forward from previous generation central Honda monitors, but its graphics do still look a bit outdated. Uh, there is not much else to criticize here though. The display features cutting edge stuff like over the air updates and 3D urban modeling as part of the built-in navigation system. Uh, there's also a shortcut area that registers up to six apps to avoid excessive menu navigation, while physical buttons and dials are retained for home, back and volume for ease of use. As you'd expect, there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, although only the Apple system is of the wireless kind. And there is a decent quality eight speaker audio system, which on this top model is upgraded to a 12 speaker Bose setup, which claims to offer concert hall quality of sound. All versions of this display get what Honda calls an intuitive voice command system, the Honda Personal Assistant, which can respond to multiple commands. Uh, for example, OK Honda, find me an Indian restaurant with Wi-Fi and free parking. Enough on screens, what else might you need to know here? Well, we like the fact that the switch gear is labeled with easily understood words and symbols. Uh, fit and finish is notably better than with the ZRV we tested a few weeks ago. It's still not quite as perfect as it needs to be if Honda wants to achieve premium status for its products though. Uh, the infotainment screen, uh, the fitment isn't quite solid. Uh, this interestingly detailed silver fascia trimming strip moves about slightly in its casing. Uh, the steering wheel paddles don't get the cool metal finish they're coated with in the cheaper ZRV. And even this very top spec model, there are still blanked off switches for features that this UK spec model presumably can't have. Uh, talking of annoyances, uh, possibly the most irritating one is that the blind spot camera interrupts screen selections like navigation mapping uh, every time it functions. And that is quite frequently because it activates every time you use the left hand indicator, but not the right hand indicator. And that is rather weird. All round visibility is fine thanks to the tall rear and side windows and that also helps over the shoulder visibility despite the rather wide rear pillars. 
but just in case a rear view camera and rear sensors are standard as you'd expect for this money. Uh, as for spaces to put things, well, you get this large open recessed area at the base of the center stack with a wireless charging mat and USB-A and USB-C charging points, plus a 12 volt socket just above. Uh, below the gear console, there are twin cup holders and a pen tray, plus there's a ticket clip in the driver's sun visor. But the big bin between the seats with its lift out tray has no charging ports and neither glove box or the door pockets are very big. Arguably though, the more significant changes lie further back. Now the previous generation model was launched with a seven seat third row option, but we won't see that this time. Uh, despite the fact that for this Mark VI design, Honda has stretched the wheelbase by 40 millimeters. which has delivered 15 millimeters more legroom in the back. Uh, the rear seat reclines quite a way back through no fewer than eight different settings and the base slides backwards and forwards by 190 millimeters. It's surprising that you can do that on this PHEV model because the drive system's battery is situated under the seat base. Apart from being able to move this bench about, the first thing you notice is that headroom is quite a lot different here to what you get at the front. Certainly it's something of a premium for what is quite a boxily styled upper mid-sized SUV. You can blame the lower ceiling height necessitated by this sunroof. It's where the roller blind for that is stored. Uh, the glass roof is standard across the range, so you have to have that. And although the glass panel is sited to primarily benefit front rather than rear seated folk, it does at least help to lift the gloom of all this dark trim as do these large rear quarter light windows. You could fit a middle seated third occupant back here more easily than with most competitors because the central tunnel is noticeably low. Just above it are twin uh, USB-C ports and twin vents. If there are only two of you back here, you'll be able to use this central armrest with its twin cup holders. There are seat back pockets and the CRV branded door cards have decently sized door bins with bottle holders. Avoid base trim and the outer seats, which have the usual Isofix child seat attachments, will be heated too. Let's finish with a look at luggage space. Now the uh, standard powered tailgate rises to reveal a 617 litre trunk space capacity in the EPHEV version. You'd normally expect that to be less than the comparable self-charging hybrid model, but in this case, the CRV EHEV model's boot capacity is actually less, 587 litres, although that's still 90 litres more than the previous generation model. This is because with the EHEV, the battery is beneath the floor rather than beneath the rear seat. Now the capacity figures just mentioned rise to 596 and 635 litres if you include the space that you get beneath the cargo area base. Uh, that underfloor space is generous enough to allow for the storage of this PHEV model's two standard charging leads, although only because Honda doesn't give you any sort of spare wheel. It does seem a bit mean that the underfloor space isn't properly trimmed. Uh, the area is coated with what looks like old roofing felt. We should point out that the capacity you're getting here is excellent by class standards. If you're looking at this EPHEV version, you're getting 167 litres more than you would in a competing BMW X3 xDrive 30e and 92 litres more than a comparable Lexus NX450h+. If you're looking at the EHEV hybrid model, there's 66 litres more than you get in a comparable Lexus NX350h. In this main boot area, there are the usual practical touches, a light and a bag hook on both sides, plus recessed storage areas to the left and to the right. The right hand one with removable panel and straps for a spare number plate just above. Uh, there's a 12 volt socket on the left and we'd want to specify the optional light that you can add to the inner side of the tailgate uh, that shines down into the load area at night. It's a real pity that those aren't standard. 
With either model, if you need more room, you can of course push the rear bench forward and free up quite a lot more of it. That won't help though if you're trying to accommodate uh, longer items like skis with the rear seat fully occupied. Unfortunately, Honda uh, hasn't thought to include either a ski hatch or the kind of convenient 40-20-40 seat back split, which you do get with most rivals. So lengthy items would have to go on the roof. Now that can take up to 82.6 kilos. With everything folded down, uh, if you load up to the roof, there's 1,710 litres of capacity in this EPHEV, or 1,100 litres if you load to the window. It's 1,642 or 1,070 litres with the EHEV hybrid. Because of the way the back seats fold down, everything does at least fold pretty flat. Extra technology has to be accompanied by plumper pricing, which is why from launch and at the time of this test, in autumn 2023, Honda was requiring a £46,000 budget for this CRV in EHEV self-charging hybrid form. That's with base Elegance trim, the plusher advanced variant, the one you're more likely to want, that'll cost closer to £49,000. You'll need more like £54,000 for this EPHEV plug-in hybrid version, which only comes in the single advanced tech level of trim. For those figures to seem reasonable value, a few mental adjustments will be needed if you're already well familiar with the CRV model line. First, unlike its direct predecessors, this sixth generation model no longer competes with Toyota's RAV4 and other similarly sized mid-shaped full hybrid SUVs like HEV versions of Ford's Cougar, uh, Hyundai's Tucson and Kia's Sportage, which all primarily sell in the 35 to 40,000 pound bracket. That role has been passed on to the brand's only slightly smaller Civic-based ZRV, which is priced from around 40,000. But even so, uh, a CRV costing nearly 50,000 pounds, really? Well, that starting figure has clearly been chosen because uh, Honda's noted that that's a starting point for similarly sized premium brand models in the segment like the BMW X3 and the Audi Q5. And it's well below what you'd pay for a base Mercedes GLC. Now true, this CRV's bonnet badge doesn't quite have the snob value of those cars, but beneath that bonnet with this EHEV model lies the more efficient, full hybrid self-charging power plant that they can't match. As for this plug-in hybrid CRV EPHEV advanced tech model, well, its asking price is about £7,000 more than a top spec Toyota RAV4 plug-in, but it's comparable to that of a PHEV Audi Q5 and well below what you'd have to find for a PHEV version of the X3 and the GLC. All this, of course, requires you to see this Honda as in some way slightly premium as a proposition, in an aspiring kind of way, perhaps like an Alfa Romeo Stelvio, priced from around £50,000 as we filmed, or a Genesis GV70, priced from around £42,500 as we filmed. But neither of those cars offer any sort of hybrid power. A closer match to this kind of uh, SUV is the Lexus NX, which, like this Honda, is offered in both full hybrid and PHEV forms. The NX is very similarly priced to the CRV in both guises, despite the fact it's a slightly smaller car. So, in summary, when it comes to the overall value proposition here, perhaps that's the easiest way to look at it. This CRV has moved on from Toyota to Lexus in its positioning. Uh, if you'd like one, uh, you'll have to decide just how comfortable you really are with that. Still interested? Uh, then your interest could be sealed with a generous standard of equipment. So, is that what you get here? Well, let's take a look. Now, across the CRV range, you get 18-inch alloy wheels, LED headlights with high beam support, uh, a panoramic glass roof, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, there's rear privacy glass, all-round parking sensors, there's also adaptive cruise control and a powered tailgate. There are power folding mirrors, a security alarm with an ultrasonic sensor, there are LED rear lights and smart entry and start keyless entry. All CRVs get selectable drive modes, so Econ, Normal, Snow and Sport. And there's also a really high standard of Honda Sensing uh, Camera Safety Kit. Now that's fitted right across the lineup. Uh, we're going to brief you on that in just a minute. 
Inside, expect to find leather upholstery, dual zone climate control, a reversing camera, heated front seats with eight-way electric adjustment for the driver, and a 10.2-inch multi-info digital driver's display instrument screen. Uh, plus, there are paddles for control of regenerative braking and deceleration. Uh, that's along with a wireless phone charger, uh, rear vent air conditioning, and an auto-dimming rear view mirror. Uh, now, you don't get any sort of spare wheel with this car though. Infotainment connectivity is taken care of by a Honda Connect 9-inch touchscreen and that incorporates navigation, wireless Apple CarPlay and non-wireless Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Also live traffic information and an 8-speaker DAB audio system with front tweeters. Plus you get over-the-air updates and an intuitive voice command system. Now the brand also includes uh, the latest version of its Honda Plus smartphone app, which includes remote vehicle locking and unlocking, along with intelligent geofencing. Now this alerts an owner if the vehicle breaches a preset geofence zone. In addition, uh, there is also the ability to send journey information uh, from the app to the car's navigation system. Finally, if you're worried about parking what is now a rather bigger SUV than its predecessors, then you'll be pleased to find that Honda, for the first time on a CRV, has included an auto parking system called Parking Pilot. Now, this can search for parking spaces as you cruise along in congested areas, and when it finds one, it'll highlight on the infotainment screens a suitable position for you to begin assisted parking. Drivers can simply select the location to be parked in, and the camera and sonar sensors detect the surrounding conditions to automatically control the accelerator, the brake, the steering and the gear shift operations to park and exit the vehicle. It can be activated in three easy steps with a dedicated switch and a touch of the screen and then the car can be parked by checking the safety of the surroundings and that significantly reduces the worries of parking in a large SUV. So that's what you get with all CRV models, but what about the differences between the trim grades? Well, most customers will want to progress from base elegance trim to the mid-range advanced model. Now this adds a 12-speaker Bose premium audio system with a subwoofer and central speakers, plus a head-up display, a multi-view camera, a heated steering wheel, uh, there are also heated rear seats, memory settings for the driver's seat, and an adaptive driving beam feature for the headlights. Plus, there are active cornering lights too. To be frank, you could probably live without most of that, unless, of course, someone else is paying. This EPHEV model's advanced tech trim level, as the name suggests, is based on advanced trim, but it further adds adaptive performance dampers, extra EV and tow driving modes, and a Berliner black painted finish for the 18-inch wheels plus there are front ventilated seats. And Honda doesn't make you pay extra for a three pin mode two charging cable to go alongside the usual mode three fast charging lead. So that's covered off the three trim levels. What about extra cost options? Well, before you start with these, uh, do bear in mind you're almost certainly going to be paying your Honda dealer more for your choice of paint color. Uh, the only standard shade available is crystal black. Uh, you'll probably want one of the five other colors, uh, which are either premium or premium plus paint shades, and they all cost more. If you want your CRV to stand out a bit, then Honda offers a visual upgrade option called the Aero Pack. Uh, this, with the EHEV model, gives you a front aero bumper, a rear lower bumper, plus special side skirts in lunar silver, and a body-coloured tailgate spoiler. Uh, you can also have an Aero Pack with the EPHEV model, uh, but there the side skirts and the tailgate spoiler will be finished in Berliner black. Across the range, you can add the Berliner black finished 18-inch wheels of this PHEV model too. Uh, for the inside, you can add illumination packs, which light up the door and boot sills, and you can add useful inner lights for the tailgate too, that shine into the load area at night. 
As for practical options, well considered the utility pack, which adds side body trims in body color, door sill trims, all season floor mats, and a boot tray with dividers. Plus you can of course individually add the usual roof crossbars and carriers for skis, snowboards, a roof box, or bikes. If you specified the detachable tow bar with its 13 pin trailer harness, you can add a bicycle carrier, and that'll take up to two cycles. If you've chosen this e PHEV version, then there are Mode 2 and Mode 3 charging cables, and Honda will sell you its own wall box. Uh, that's the Honda Power Charger, and that can charge it up to 22 kilowatts, three phase, and 7.4 kilowatts, single phase. On to safety. Now it's worth pointing out at the outset that structurally the CRV is a very safe piece of design and the strong, rigid and stiff platform incorporates new structural components for improved front, rear and side collision protection. Uh, the EPHEV version features an additional floor cross member for increased passenger protection in the event of a side impact. Across the range, uh, there are 11 airbags in the Mark VI model, including a new front center airbag, uh, which prevents a collision between the driver and the front passenger, and a new knee airbag too, for both the driver and the front passenger. As you expect, if any of those bags deploy, uh, your exact accident location will be sent to the rescue authorities via a built-in e-call system. But of course, much of modern automotive safety these days is camera, radar, and sensor based, and Honda claims a step forward here too. Uh, this sixth generation CRV is the brand's first European vehicle to feature the company's most advanced suite of advanced driver assistance features. Um, the Honda Sensing 360 package, that is. This includes a 100 degree forward facing camera, millimeter wave radar, and four uh, corner radars to offer a complete 360 degree view around the vehicle. Object recognition by image via the CRV's updated front camera and object detection by radar allows the vehicle to identify road lines, verges, motorcycles, cyclists and other vehicles. The fitment of the Honda Sensing 360 package enables a range of new and updated features aimed at providing an extra level of safety and convenience for the driver. Uh, included here for the first time in any Honda model is front cross traffic warning. Now, this reduces uh, head-on collisions at intersections with poor visibility. The system informs the driver of vehicles to the left or the right when moving off after a stop and when at low speed. An advanced traffic sign recognition system detects and recognizes road signs and displays them on the instrument binnacle uh, behind the steering wheel, uh, as well as on the head-up display. And that works in conjunction with the adaptive cruise control setup. And this offers one-touch speed adjustment to specific speed limits. For the first time in Europe, uh, the system also provides a pre-notification of signs, such as an upcoming stop sign, to inform the driver as soon as possible and to help them prepare for junctions. Now we mentioned adaptive cruise control, that has been updated over the old model and it now works with turn signals to initiate acceleration when you're overtaking. Uh, the system also offers low speed follow functionality, uh, cornering speed adjustment by road curvature and incline and that enables the CRV to maintain a constant speed on descents. Lane change collision mitigation assists steering operation during lane changing to avoid a collision with the vehicle approaching from behind and in the next lane, notifying the driver with a warning sound. Uh, debuting on the CRV is traffic jam assist. This reduces the driver's workload in low speed congested traffic by helping to keep the vehicle in its lane and that starts from naught miles an hour. Uh, when traffic congestion clears, the car seamlessly switches to the lane keeping assist system. Another new CRV feature here is active lane change assist and that assists steering operation when you're changing lanes and it's triggered by use of the turn signals. Uh, once the driver holds the one touch turn signal, the radar system ensures that the next lane is clear before the vehicle moves over. 
As for more familiar features, well, you get a neat blind spot information system which comes on when you indicate, but unfortunately its feed displays on the central infotainment screen uh, rather than in the instrument panel and that displaces the navigation mapping uh, if you happen to be using it. Uh, now that could be uh, theoretically problematic if you're coming up to a junction. Equally irritating is the overspeed warning chime that you have to keep continually turning off but that's now mandated by the bureaucrats in Brussels, so there's really not very much Honda can do about that. Uh, what else? Well, autonomous braking is a given in modern family cars uh, these days, of course. Uh, this one's collision mitigation braking system helps bring the car to a stop if it determines that a collision with a vehicle detected in front is unavoidable. Uh, in this instance, it will also offer a warning sound, and if necessary, uh, the brake will be automatically applied applied. There's also lane keeping assist and lane departure warning and a low speed brake system which will automatically apply the brakes at parking speeds uh, if you're just about to hit something. Road departure mitigation, well that warns you if you're getting uh, rather too close to the side of the road. Uh, unintended acceleration mitigation, well that uh, stops the car from lurching forward if you unintentionally stamp on the throttle. And as you'd expect, uh, there's also a drive attention monitor. Now that detects driver drowsiness and it'll prompt you to stop for that restorative coffee. Plus a tyre deflation warning system, Isofix charge seat fastenings, whiplash reducing front headrests and the usual electronic assistance for braking, stability and traction control. Overall it's a strong safety showing. Uh, this Japanese brand's bold ambition is to bring traffic collision fatalities involving Honda automobiles and motorcycles to zero by 2050. And you'd have to say, looking at what's provided here, that they're going about it just the right way. It's taken Honda a long time to bring us the kind of plug-in hybrid CRV we're trying here. The company always maintained that CRV owners uh, didn't really feel the need to plug in, and initial perusal of the sales info for this car might leave you thinking that maybe they still don't have to. Uh, after all, big claims are made for the alternative eHEV self-charging full hybrid technology, which is used on the rather more affordable version of this sixth generation model. Unfortunately, though, that isn't backed up by the stats that that self-charging hybrid model delivers. 42.8 mpg on the combined cycle and 150 grams per kilometer of CO2. The most obvious comparison to make is with the Toyota self-charging full hybrid powertrain as used in the RAV4 and the Lexus NX. That manages just under 50 miles per gallon and around 130 grams per kilometer, so quite a difference. Obviously, the eHEV system is efficient compared to more conventional engine tech. Uh, for comparison, a base petrol 2-litre BMW X3 xDrive 2-litre i only returns 37.2 miles per gallon and 173 grams per kilometre. But the self-charging version of the Honda Hybrid just isn't as efficient as it ought to be. Its CO2 reading can't even match that of the previous generation hybrid CRV. Uh, that was rated at 126 grams per kilometer in comparable all-wheel drive form. And that old car's 39.8 mpg combined cycle fuel reading wasn't really far off the Mark VI replacement either. All of which is rather disappointing given the amount of development work that has obviously gone on here. Uh, a lot of work has gone into reducing weight of this Mark VI model for example, and Honda has improved the hybrid system's 2-litre engine too. Here, direct injection technology enables fuel to be injected into the power plant multiple times during the combustion phase, and that reduces emissions over a wide operating range. This, in turn, helps this CRV to cope with a higher compression ratio. Enough in this Honda in eHEV form. What about the efficiency showing of the ePHEV plug-in variant that we're trying here? Well, that initially looks rather more promising. The 353.1 miles per gallon combined cycle fuel reading doesn't mean much in the real world, of course. Uh, that's based on fully using the 50 mile range uh, supposed to be possible from the 17.7 .7 kilowatt hour battery when it's fully charged. Think more like uh, 40 miles in the real world though. 
It's possibly more relevant to note that even when driven using only combustion power with the provided save mode activated, and that allows you to save up your battery charge for later in the trip, uh, Honda says that this car will return a combined figure of 45.6 miles per gallon, which really isn't bad at all. Nor is the quoted uh, 18 grams per kilometer CO2 reading, and that sticks the car comfortably into the 8% benefiting kind taxation bracket that that many likely business customers will be targeting. In comparison, the Lexus NX 450h Plus uh, that manages 313.8 miles per gallon, 21 grams per kilometer, and 47 miles of EV range. With the BMW X3 xDrive 30e plug-in, it's just 141.2 mpg, 43 grams per kilometer, and 34 miles of EV range. Honda shouldn't congratulate itself too much, though. A Mercedes GLC 300e plug-in manages far superior returns of 560. 65 mpg, 12 grams per kilometer of CO2, and up to 80 miles of EV range. A word on charging this EPHEV model, uh, it takes two and a half hours at a 6.8 kilowatt charger because the plug-in hybrid system can replenish the battery at a maximum charging rate of 6.8 kilowatts. That's an hour faster than a Kia Sorento PHEV because that car can only charge at up to 3.3 kilowatts. It is quite a lot slower though than a Land Rover Discovery Sport PHEV because that car can accept up to 32 kilowatts. On this Honda, the central screen has a selectable PHEV menu which allows you to set charging settings and pre-journey climate settings too. Plus the screen has a Wi-Fi enabled option to search for nearby public charging stations. The efficiency figures we quoted you earlier on are obviously officially published WLTP rated ones. Uh, to deliver anything close to them in the real world you will obviously need to do your bit as a driver and that means regularly engaging the most frugal of the for drive settings on offer here, which is Econ. You'll also have to maximize regenerative braking via these steering wheel paddles here and keep an eye on the instrument binnacle's uh, left-hand power meter. If you use the navigation system, the car will intelligently apply battery energy where it's most needed, and the system will always retain enough energy uh, to boost the petrol engine up inclines. The car does its bit to help out in other ways too, uh, contributing with a predictive eco assist system which optimizes the battery state of charge and that's based on the road information and the traffic conditions of the selected route. And the central monitor has a selectable power flow option which shows you EV, HV and total drive range figures flanked by an energy monitor which shows you at any given time what's being powered by what. Uh, a smaller power flow meter can also be selected to show in the centre of the speedometer. Now do bear in mind that if you choose the ePHEV version of this car uh, then battery placement means that fuel tank size falls quite a lot uh, from the 50 7 litre figure that you get with the EHEV to just 45.5 litres. Even so, over 500 miles of driving range should still be possible. What else might you need to know? Uh, insurance groupings. Well, you're looking at 34E for the EHEV, eight groups higher than a RAV4 hybrid, and 37E for this EPHEV. Predicted residual values have a premium brand look, 52% after three years with an EHEV or 53% with the PHEV. The three year 90,000 mile warranty is better than the package that you get from many competitors and you can now extend that to five years at extra cost. Uh, you shouldn't really have to though, as a standard five and seven year warranties that are offered by competing Hyundai and Kia models demonstrate. And Toyota now offers up to 10 years of cover, so Honda really does need to look at this. What else? Uh, well, this PHEV model's hybrid battery has its own separate 8-year, 100,000-mile warranty, uh, guaranteeing charge capacity of at least 70%. For all CRVs, surface corrosion is covered for three years, exhaust corrosion, uh, that's covered for five years, chassis corrosion for 10 years, and structural corrosion is covered for 12. 
Servicing is once a year or every 12 and a half thousand miles, whichever comes first. That is a bit on the frequent side, but the brand does make it possible to budget ahead for scheduled maintenance with a fixed price scheme, which is called Five, and that covers servicing for a total of five years. It also adds an extra two years of maintenance, an extended warranty for that period, and roadside assistance breakdown cover uh, should the unexpected happen. And now this can also be transferred to a new owner if you sell the car before that service plan runs out. It's easy to imagine yourself as target market for a car like this sixth generation CRV. You have a couple of kids, an active lifestyle, and an aversion to rather dull, large estate cars. The thing is though, you also have an aversion to the kind of typical mid-sized SUV soft rotors that such a mindset would normally direct you towards. Understandably, perhaps, you think that they're all rather silly and pretentious. But this car isn't. In fact, whether you choose the EHEV hybrid version or this PHEV model, it's as sensible as family segment lifestyle oriented SUV motoring gets. A car for people who look at what a vehicle can do for them rather than what it says about them. End use, you see, has been the overriding design parameter here and not cutting edge styling, clever gadgetry, irrelevant pin sharp handling or pointlessly powerful engines. As a result, it's an extremely easy thing to live with. It's a kind of car that you'll own and then wonder how on earth you manage without it. That may not be a recipe for media headlines, but it's an approach that other brands could certainly learn from, explaining why so many CRVs are bought by folk who previously owned one. These are people who will probably stick with Honda into this sixth generation version if they can afford to, of course. The price increase here really is significant over the previous model and it's indicative of the fact that Honda these days isn't particularly worried about selling fewer cars as long as the ones they do are more profitable. But that approach has given this Mark VI model a premium style price tag that its cabin quality and its power output doesn't feel particularly suited to. Uh, you all have to decide whether you can live with that, of course, and on the EHEV hybrid model with a CO2 reading, which is disappointingly high. If you can though, then there's loads to like here. Lots of space, a flexible seating format, an ergonomically excellent cabin, big car style refinement, class leading levels of safety, and on this EPHEV, excellent efficiency figures too. Ultimately, this car remains distinctly different, distinctly, well, CRV, which ultimately might very well be all you need. <laughs>